everyone and welcome to Daisy Stalls. In this video, I'll be showing you the process of customizing and painting this mare and foal model horse duo. This project didn't go as smoothly as I had planned, which is the case for many of my other customs, but I think it makes for an entertaining video, so I do hope you enjoy. If you're curious, all the materials I use in this video will be listed down below in the description box. Now without further ado, let's head over to the craft table. I'm going to start by customizing the mare. The base model I'll be using is this Abaco Barb Mare from Safari LTD. I really do like the mold as it is. The face is so cute, although she has some really strange hair texture. Although I really like her as is, she reminds me more of a stallion with her intense expression, so I thought I would do something about that. I decided I wanted her to look like an eating mare that is just slightly putting her head up to check on her foal. So after a bit of hesitation, I decided I would go ahead and cut her head and neck off to be repositioned. Since my arms are pretty weak and I don't have a Dremel tool, I got my dad to help me saw her head off with a handsaw. She's now been reduced to three pieces, so let's prepare her head and body to be reunited again. I'm making sure to shave down the base of the neck so there are no pointy parts that could stand out when I'm sculpting on the new neck. And same thing goes for the cut area around the head. Now I'm using an electric drill along with a small drill bit to drill two holes into the base of the neck and the head. Then as always, I'm using some thick, stiff wire to connect the head and body. Although I was pretty sure I wanted the relaxed head pose, I did go through and look at some more extravagant ones just to see. But I ended up with the one that I decided on in the first place. In the past, I haven't really been brave enough to re-sculpt on faces to make them look more expressive, so I thought I would challenge myself a little bit and try to make a partly open mouth, which will complement the relaxed and eating expression I am aiming for. So here I am just cutting off the lower part of the mouth using a box cutter. And one of my customs wouldn't be complete without epoxy, so we're going to use this sculpting medium to try to sculpt a new lower jaw. I mix equal parts from A and B, then I get to sculpting. I started with the lower teeth, then I put a pretty thin flimsy layer of epoxy on top of that and used a lot of time trying to make it look natural. And this is what I ended up with. It's not perfect, but I think it's alright for a first try. I realized her eyes weren't really fitting in with the relaxed expression, so I used some epoxy to fix that. And same thing with the ears. They were looking very alert, which is of course not what I'm going for, so I am going to try to re-sculpt some new ones. However, I've done three horses with re-sculpted ears so far, and two of those horses had one of their ears break. So to try to prevent that, I am approaching this one a little bit differently. As you just saw, I didn't cut off the ears all the way, and I'll be using the remainder of the plastic ears as a base for the new ears. Now, sculpting the ears is always a fiddly process, but having the plastic bases actually made it a bit simpler. I sculpted both of them to look very relaxed, and I looked at a bunch of reference pictures on Pinterest to make sure I was getting them right. I'm guessing I started to realize that this horse's entire face is just the opposite of relaxed because the nostrils had to go, they were too flared and need to be chilled out. Now she's certainly looking a lot closer to what I was aiming for, so let's put her back on her body. Aww. She looks adorable. Well, in a wire neck kind of way. 
After struggling for a couple minutes, I'm going to use some epoxy and glue and put that on the wire to make sure it stays in place. Now it's the same procedure as all of my neck re-sculpts. I'm going to take some aluminum foil and wrap that around the neck to give the epoxy something to grab onto. Now I actually hadn't planned on this being a mare and foal. However, this little cute foal came in the mail and I realized that he would be the perfect foal for this mare. So I was like super, super excited about that. But we'll get back to the foal later in the video. Anyways, I mixed up some more epoxy glue and put that on the aluminum foil to make it secure. Now it's finally time to get out the epoxy sculpt for the neck. Now the function of the first pass of epoxy on the neck is pretty much just to stabilize it even though we just did that with the epoxy glue and the aluminum foil. It might not be completely necessary, but I think the main reason that I do it that I don't like to tell you is that sculpting just makes me nervous and I like to put off making the details as long as possible. To make sure the next layer of epoxy will stick well, I am roughing up and making crisscross patterns in the wet epoxy. When that layer of epoxy is cured, I'm going to start on the second layer, which will have a lot of muscle details, etc. Now, let me tell you, this neck in particular, I had such a hard time with. It was so hard making it not look long and awkward, and I think the pose wasn't really helping me. This is what the second pass looked like on the left side, and it was quite awkward and not that great to be honest. Then I started on the third pass and I tried my best to make the neck look a bit less awkward and a bit more meaty. But honestly, I had such a hard time. I did not know what was wrong with it. There was so many adjustments. I usually do each side of the neck separately, so I started on the right side, and I was actually really pleased with how it was turning out. I realized she didn't have any mare parts, which is pretty important when you have a foal, so I went ahead and made some for her. After spending an absolutely ungodly amount of time just adjusting and adjusting and adjusting on this neck, I was getting pretty fed up. So I decided to sand and prime her so I could get a better overview of what exactly is off about this neck. And while I was sanding, I accidentally put some pressure on her ear and it decided to just pop off. So I guess the epoxy didn't like to grip onto the plastic. I'm going to use some super glue to glue it back on, but first I'm roughing up the plastic to make the glue and epoxy stick to it better. Then when I was finished with all the prepping, I'm giving her a quick rinse in water to get rid of any dust. And here I am spraying her with primer. After giving her a couple layers of primer, I sat down and really had a good look at her to determine what was making her neck look awkward. In the end, I decided that I needed to make the shoulder more prominent. This would make the divide between the body and the neck more clear, and I also just think it's more anatomically correct. And I used the leftover epoxy to fill in any holes or imperfections. When the final layer of epoxy had completely cured, I moved on to sanding out any bumps or imperfections. And then to address the weird fur texture she has on her body, it looks very unnatural. So I decided to sand her entire body, trying to not get rid of any muscle details. It certainly looked a lot better when I was done. However, I was a little bit concerned that the subtle lines on her body would be very apparent when I painted her, 
but we'll have to wait and see. To make her look more lifelike, I'm going to be using my PVO porcelain liner to give her some veins on her face and legs. I went a bit wild with it and added some on her stomach as well. I think it will look cool with paint. Now last thing I have to do before we paint this mare is of course the mane. I lay out thin tapering blobs onto her neck and use thick and thin needles to sculpt on the hair strands. I was aiming for a mid-length, kind of ragged, wild look and I especially paid attention to making the main look random and not all facing the same direction. This was the first pass but it looked a bit too thin and clean so I did a few more passes and in the end I was very happy with the result. And this is the leftover epoxy. That's pretty good. I usually mix up way too much. Now let's get to work on prepping the foal too. I'm going to be using a sharp knife to carefully carve away the plastic seams that are pretty much all around the foal. As well as cutting away the text on the belly. I use the small bit of leftover epoxy to fill in some small imperfections. Apparently he was also missing a pretty essential part of the booty area, so I went ahead and sculpted him one of those. Now that these cuties are primed and prepped, it's time to choose a coat color for them. This was a really hard decision for me, partly because I am really indecisive, but also because the color of the foal and the color of the mare had to make sense together. And there are so many cute options! After a lot, and I mean days, of thinking, I decided that I wanted the mare to be a blue roan and the foal to be a light bay. So I'm going to paint the mare with a light grey acrylic paint that is just a few shades lighter than the body of a blue roan. Now hold up, you might be thinking, huh, a roan? Aren't those colors pretty difficult to do? <sighs> well, yes. I had the bright idea to just go into this project with a roaning technique that I hadn't properly tested and I was just hoping that it would work. Well, it didn't exactly work out, but I'll let you wait and see what happens. Alright, so her light grey base layer is done. So now to prepare for pastels, I'm going to spray her with my sealant. When that's done and dry, I am taking some brownish grayish pastels and using a fluffy brush to brush it all over her body. When working with soft pastels like this, it is super important that you do not touch the horse without gloves. The oils in your fingers can interfere with both the sealant and the pastels and potentially make it grainy. I wanted the face to not be completely black but have some brown nuances. So to achieve that, I'm doing a base layer of dark brown. And I'm using the very opaque black pastels on her legs. She's at the extremely ugly stage right now, but she'll get better, or so I thought. I continue to shade her body with light colors. And also darkening her legs and face.
Now here is where things take a turn for the worse. I was basically planning on using this sponge on a stick with a very small amount of acrylic paint on it to very easily make that signature white hair roan look. Well, after an extreme amount of hesitation, I decided to just go for it. And ultimately, it just ended up very patchy. It did not look like hair. So eventually, I realized she looked like trash. So I just sat her down and I was just contemplating my life choices, to be honest. I was honestly really bummed about it. I was so set on her being a blue roan. But I didn't want to abandon her, so I had to come up with this solution. I went back and forth a bit. I considered repainting her completely and making her a bay. But ultimately, I landed on making her coat black. It's a coat I've never attempted before, and I've heard it's pretty easy, so that incentivized me a little bit. <laughs> now, I didn't want her coat to be completely black. I wanted it to have some nuances of brown. And since you can only go darker and not lighter with pastels, I am laying down an initial layer of brown underneath. I'm focusing on the areas where I know the brown usually pops out a bit more. I only did a couple layers of brown, and it wasn't a huge deal if it was slightly grainy, as the black is very dark and will cover most of that. And of course, as always, make sure to spray your sealant in between every layer of pastel. After a couple layers of brown, I hesitantly went in with the pure black pastel, and it was quite scary at first, but I soon realized that it was quite easy actually to work with the black. I've had many past experiences with darkening a already light base color with pastels, and they have definitely not been good, but this one pleasantly surprised me. Since I was already going for the darkest color, the gray never showed up. Eventually, I went in with the hard brush and really rubbed in the pigments. And she actually only required one layer of black. So after giving her a spray of sealant and waiting the appropriate time for it to dry, I'm going to tackle the markings. I started by mapping out her blaze with watered out acrylic paint. When that's done, I mixed red, yellow, and white, and painted her cute little snoot. I also wanted her to have four white socks, so after mapping out the height of each one, I filled them in with white acrylic paint. Using Bramer Studio's tutorial, I paint her eyes, I wasn't able to film it because I had to really concentrate and she was out of frame, but Bramer Studio's tutorial got her covered. I try to add loads of details on her face. I highlight the veins in her face with a gray paint. I add small dots to her muzzle and really try to make her look natural and alive. Now for the mane and tail, I mix up some black and brown acrylic paint. I make the mane black, fading into chestnut orange by the tips. I really like how that looks. And same thing with the tail. Now let's shift to the hooves. Since all of her legs have socks, I am painting her hooves in a light brownish yellowish color. I've gotten many questions from you guys on how I paint realistic hooves. And though I try to briefly explain it in these videos, I am planning on making a thorough custom tutorial video. So if you want that, let me know down below. It's quite time consuming and definitely not my favorite part of the customizing process, but I'll save the details for the tutorial video. After giving the mare a couple final layers of sealant, I'm going to gloss up her eyes. And with that, our mare is done. But we're not done yet, she's missing her foal, so let's move back to him. After giving him two unnecessary sprays of primer, I'm going to be using acrylic paint to paint him in a off-white color. I gave him the essential pre-pastel layer of sealant, then we're good to go. I'm aiming for a very light, cute bay, 
and I've noticed that most folds don't tend to have much coloring on their bellies, so I am intentionally leaving that area without pastels. Man, choosing a color for the fold was so hard. I mean, there are so many different cute colors. And I'm kind of on the fence if I did the right choice. Like, bays are so common. But I think he turned out pretty adorable anyways. The second layer basically consisted of darkening, and especially around the mane and the ears. After only two layers of pastel, I was already satisfied with him, so I gave him the final layer of sealant, then I started painting his mane. After finishing up the mane and tail and the eyes, I start on the blaze and I wanted it to be pretty similar to his mom. So he gets a thick blaze in the middle of his face with that adorable pink muzzle. I gave him one small sock on his back leg. I painted the hooves in more of a solid color than his mother. And after glossing up his eyes, this mare and foal duo is complete. Despite this project not going according to plan on every level, this pair has actually really grown on me and I really like them. I haven't thought of names for them yet. I'm thinking maybe something inspired by nature, which is usually what I like. Also, I'd love to hear what you guys think of these two models. Let me know down below in the comments. Regardless, I want to thank you all for watching this very long video all the way to the end. That really means a lot to me. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing for more content like this. Again, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!